bakano ina kai ina zanga zanga ka sai mace ya mu zanga zanga ran plato ina kai ina taya in ya mu zanga zanga nan sakwata ina kai ina taya in ya mu zanga zanga dan adamawa ina kai ina taya in ya mu zanga zanga this cleric is pushing a dangerous narrative it's not surprising though because he's been classified among the clerics for hire by some clerics in the north. Yes, we'll get to see that in a moment. He's using a derogatory word to refer to Igbos, asking his followers and Kanu people at large not to support Igbo people in the protest. He's trying to push the narrative that the protest is sponsored by Igbos. Let's get the record straight. Even when the first protest happened in Nigeria, there was this protest that held in Niger state where many people blocked roads, they were attacking trucks that were conveying food products and all that, blocking roads as you can see in this video. After that one, there was another one in Ibado and some other places around the country. Igbo people made it clear that they will not be joining any protest. Some of the reasons advanced then was the fact that they warned many people against voting for Tinubu and other APC leaders that are in power today. No one listened. Another reason advanced at the time, which is still relevant by the way, is the fact that Igbo people are always made scapegoats. In things like this, they will always find ways to blame them. It's like corrupt politicians somehow get united by the singular fact of blaming Igbos, using them as scapegoats. Even their enemies will unite among themselves if they always find that common ground of blaming an Igbo person for something that happened, whether it is true or not, they always find that unity and people continue falling for it. That's why this cleric is pushing this dangerous narrative that Igbo people are behind the protests despite the fact that they have dissociated themselves from the protest. In fact, it is fellow Igbos that are telling their brothers to try and participate this time around, to unite Nigerians that failing to participate might create division that others will say, ah, some people feel they are not part of Nigeria or they are not part of the wider protest to force politicians to do the right thing and reduce the suffering that everyone is unfortunately experiencing. Like P2B said during the campaigns, no person buys bread cheaper than any other. There is no market that is meant for Muslims alone or Christians alone. And all that he said during the campaigns, it is now that Nigerians are truly understanding it. They are seeing it physically that truly, when an incompetent government is in power, no one enjoys. It affects everyone, all the failed policies and mismanagement of the economy by the current administration. It is affecting everyone, no one is spared. Even Nigerians that are living abroad, they know how much they used to send to their relatives in Nigeria. And now that Naira has become virtually worthless, they have to send more to cover the high cost of living in Nigeria. The biggest mess created was actually the devaluation of the Naira from 460 to 1,400. And you can see almost 90, 97% of the companies, in, uh, especially in food and beverages businesses, uh, none of them will pay dividend this year for sure. Even dollar billionaires are not spared. Look at Dangote. The past few months alone, the number of times he has complained against the government policies, you will see that it just remains small thing. He will start carrying placards and protesting everywhere. That's how bad things are. So it's very good that many people in the north are seeing through their pretense. All the clerics that are working for the government or sympathetic to the government, they are seeing through their lies. They've seen that they've been deceiving them all along. And the fact that they are able to oppose all these clerics even face to face, like the one that happened in Kanu, although we covered it in the other video, where followers of an imam in a mosque openly disagreed with him that they will join the protest, that protest is not haram. <laughs> Yes, Sheikh Gumi speaking in support of the protest being planned in Nigeria. 
that everybody has the right to protest, that protest is not haram. He even cited the fact that Tinubu, Buhari and other APC leaders protested against good luck Jonathan. They led the protest as you can see. So if these leaders could protest at the time when petrol was being sold for about 65 naira per liter, the good Lord Jonathan administration only wanted to increase it a bit. What about now that petrol is being sold from between 600 and something naira per liter to about 900 naira per liter depending on where you live in Nigeria? So you see, protests are overdue. If Nigerians protested when petrol was being sold for below 150 naira per liter, they should have shut down this country since last year. Nevertheless, no time is late. That's why the government is rattled about this protest. They feel that this protest might sweep them away from power. And they have tried to convince them through their clerics in many mosques. They've seen their serious resistance from the people. People don't want to, for the first time, listen to their imams and take their advice because everyone is feeling the hardship. Go to the market and try to shop for groceries, you will understand, that's assuming you don't live in this country. So this is the situation, and like it happened during the presidential election campaigns, when some politicians couldn't compete based on character and competence, they had to resort to tribalism, they had to resort to using religious sentiments to try to sway people to their side. Yes, that's exactly what happened last year. And now they are repeating the same thing through some imams and clerics that are for hire. These clerics work for politicians. Once they collect money like they did this time around, it's no longer a rumor. They collected millions of naira to demarket and convince people that protests are haram. That's why they are now pushing a new narrative. They've seen that it is failing. For the first time, they are not able to convince their followers not to do something. So they are pushing another narrative that Igbos are the ones behind the protest, that other people should not join them. This is very dangerous. Despite the fact that this is a dangerous narrative, Igbos shouldn't still fall for it. This is because they want to use one stone to kill two birds. They want to use this narrative to prevent people from the north from participating in the protest because they will feel, ah, since Igbos are behind this protest, Maybe they have an agenda and our agenda is not the same with theirs, so let's back out. On the other hand, it will stop many Igbos from participating in the protest because they will say, ah, we have said that we will not participate, they are already calling us out, they are already saying that this is our agenda, that we are behind this, no need to participate at all, so thereby reducing the turnout. Now there is a legitimate concern that businesses might be targeted in a massive protest. And since many Igbos involve in trading, they might be targeted and they will experience serious losses. So the best approach is for them to only protest in their region. No one can target their businesses in their own region. But the people that are living outside their region, they should just be cautious. Nigeria belongs to all of us despite the obvious marginalization. And when someone is trying to prevent you from doing something, something that is your constitutional right, and if you fall for it and not do that thing, that means you have accepted the fact that you are not equals. Yes, no one has the right to tell you if you will protest or not to protest. No one owns you, no one makes any decision for you. And considering the fact that Igbo people will benefit more in a booming economy because they are into commerce. Many of you know how your sales and turnover have tumbled the past few months since this calamity befell Nigeria. So it's a matter of if you do or you don't do, you will still be blamed. So is it not better to do and damn the consequences? Anyway, Tinubu and co have their hands full. They are fighting on many fronts. Look at this headline from the Nation newspaper. The same man behind this headline published another article called Obituary to demarket P2B before the presidential election. So if they could do this to El Rufai, someone that did everything in his power to project Tinubu before the presidential election, people should understand how heartless they are. They are ready to fight dirty. They are already fighting dirty, not ready to do it. 
This is why everyone must unite, even old enemies. Anyone that is fighting against the common enemy must become your friend because you have one objective. That was how APC galvanized all the opposition against Good Luck Jonathan. They even poached people from the PDP and they were all able to do this to unseat a sitting president. So people don't understand what they are up to. Stop making excuses saying, ah, these people didn't talk during Buhari's time, these people didn't do this, why are they waking up? You are helping them push their narrative. This is their way of dividing people. You must unite in order to have one voice and challenge the people in power. Remember, they are using Nigerian people's money to fight Nigerian people. Nigerian people don't have money, that's why they are protesting in the first place. The only power they have is their numbers. Thanks for watching.